Hey guys, good morning. It is Rebecca, aka Vegan Bodega Cat, and today I'm being social for a good reason. Actually, I think for two good reasons. Number one, I always complain about not having any friends and then I just don't make any. So here is me trying to make a friend. Wish me luck. The second reason is kombucha. Well, I'm a kombucha fan. I tried to make it once before. It turned out all right, but that was a while ago, and I've been wanting to make it myself again because honestly, it's pretty darn expensive. It's like $5 a bottle. So, I reached out to an online friend I have that you'll meet in a little bit, and I asked her, hey, do you want to show me how to make kombucha on my YouTube channel? And she said, sure. So here I am at her house. We're about to go through the whole process with her kombucha, and then I'm going to go try to recreate it at home with my own kombucha. Without further ado, let's make some kombucha. I'm like a lot less nervous <laughs> now that I actually met her. Uh, this is my friend, Sabs. Hi. Uh, we've known each other on Instagram for not that long, a few months, like several months. Um, she used to run the social media for the Wally Shop. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. And that's how I met her because I did a post for the Wally Shop a little while back and then I started following her and I'm so glad I did because she does a lot of like zero waste stuff and some vegan stuff and she's just a lovely down to earth human being which is refreshing. So do you want to tell them a little bit about your page and what you do and what your goals are? Sure. Hi. <laughs> Uh, I'm Sabs, also known as Sustainable Sabs. I talk a lot about veganism, zero waste, how to reduce waste in your everyday life, and just how to be an overall better steward to the environment and to animals. And she just started her YouTube channel, so I'll put that down below as well as her Instagram. And today she's gonna be our kombucha guru because she almost always has a batch of kombucha going and I figured why not go to someone who's been doing this for a while before I attempt to do my own again. Just need a couple of ingredients for kombucha. The first one is obviously tea. I'm using this flowering tea, but it's green tea as a base. You can use either green tea or black tea, um, but try not to get anything that has too many other flavors in it. So just super simple green or black tea. You will also need sugar. Here I'm using brown sugar, but you could use coconut sugar, organic cane sugar, anything like that. You will also need water, boiled, and you're gonna need a SCOBY, which we'll show you later on in the video. Uh, I'm gonna use this large jar. Obviously I'll transfer the oats first, but I'll wash it. And then this is the size jar that I'm using. It is four pints. So big enough for all the kombucha and the scooby. And we also need like little jars for the second fermentation. So you can use that is really the cute. healthy one, something like this, which might or might not have used to hold tequila in it. Something like a flip top jar like this works great for carbonation or any other small kombucha jar if you have one of yeah. those left over. I came upon uh, several uh, health aid coupons. So what I've been doing over the past few weeks is buying health aids and then just like rinsing and drying the actual bottles. This way I can use it for the second fermentation when I make kombucha. Oh, and you need something plastic to handle the scoby with because you can't use metal. That's everything, right? Yes. Cool. First off, we're boiling a ton of water so we can make tea. It's literally just making tea. I'm sure a bunch of you guys know how to do that. Just gonna start by brewing some tea. So if it was like loose leaf tea, how much do you put? One tablespoon for seven cups of water. It's not a ton because the loose tea is very potent. I'm gonna use this measuring cup to make seven. Perfect. Okay, and for seven cups of water, you're going to need half a cup of sugar. Woo! Now we let it sit. All right, so we'll get back when this is cool. Two hours later. So now our tea has cooled and the flower has bloomed because we used fancy tea this time. Um, and we need to strain it for our first step, first fermentation. And we have like a little like tea strainer thingy right here. Once I've strained the tea, also, I'm just gonna actually add the scoby in and you also need to add the remaining tea from the last batch. Um, so just, oh my God. There it goes. Just get any cloth that you have. It doesn't have to be beautiful. This is from an old piece of bed sheet that ripped. Use a rubber band and then put this in a uh, sort of like dark, warm place. Just doesn't, just don't want it to be in direct sunlight. 
and leave it for anywhere between a week and like 28 days. Okay, so after a period of time when your kombucha is fermenting, this one has been fermenting for I think eight days, but it can go for up to a month. You are ready for the second part of the fermentation. Here it is. It's so neat. <laughs> in here is the scoby, which, can I have a piece when when I go? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Extra? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna grab a, a piece of this scoby so I can do my own kombucha stuff uh, at my apartment, and I'm, I'm very grateful and I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you don't have a friend that has a scoby, which by the way, you don't even need a friend. I feel, I see like free scobies on Craigslist sometimes. So you could even, if you're not scared, go to Craigslist and get a free scoby. Um, but if you are scared and you can't access a scoby, you can make one by just letting like original unflavored kombucha just sit um, just like this. And then a scoby will form on the top and then you're good to go. Here is the scoby. It's kind of like this alien looking being. It's, um, don't touch it. It's not the greatest texture. But SCOBY is spelled C-S-C-O-B-Y. It stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. So it's actually a living thing. So the reason you put the sugars in is because the SCOBY actually eats the sugars and during that process, it ferments the tea. So um, now we're just going to remove the SCOBY, um, take some of the tea, and then when I remove the SCOBY, I'm gonna put it in a separate jar. I'll add some of this tea into it because it needs tea to continue surviving and then we'll make, just prepare our kombucha batch with the rest of the tea. Gonna go ahead and remove this part. Here's a scoby. As you can see, it's kind of layered. So this one on the top, that's the newest layer that formed from this batch of kombucha. And a new layer of scoby will form every time you make kombucha. Which is why so, pe so many people are getting rid of their scobies because there's so much. Looks like an alien, right? It is gorgeous. All right, and I need to pour some tea over it, enough that it covers all of the kombucha, or all of the scoby. So this will go into the fridge, and this I will strain for scoby bits. <laughs> Get our immune system working. So you're basically just like straining out little stray bits of scoby, otherwise yeah. you'll get like slimy particles in your mouth. Yeah. So now that we've strained all the kombucha, we have it in two bottles. Both of them have to be uh, sealed tight. And then these ferment for a second time to make it carbonated. And it takes a couple days, depending on how carbonated you like it. But you have to remember to like burp them a couple times, like once a day, right? Mm -hmm. um, otherwise the pressure will build up from the car carbonation and you might have like an exploded bottle on your hands. And then when you're done and you're happy, that's when you put them in the fridge, right? Yeah. All right, awesome. So that's basically the gist of kombucha making. It doesn't seem too hard. I'm gonna try it on my own in a couple days, which is gonna be in this video. So like, it's just gonna be like a little flash forward. And we're gonna see if I can do this right. Thank you so much for being my kombucha sensei, um, <laughs> my teacher. I think I think I got this. I think it'll turn out great. Um, if you're interested in more zero waste stuff and vegan stuff, then you can follow her uh, down below. And I guess we're just gonna cross our fingers that my half of the video goes well. It will. <laughs> Thanks. So it's my turn to make kombucha. Originally, I was gonna make this whole giant thing of kombucha, but then I did some research and I realized that I don't have enough starter liquid in my SCOBY hotel um, to do this, which is 16 cups. I only have enough to do maybe like half of that, so we're gonna be doing eight cups of kombucha. I'm boiling the water in this, and then I think I'm gonna seep the tea in the actual jar. Also, I don't have loose leaf tea. So I will be using this Twinnings English Breakfast Black Tea to make the kombucha. This actually used to be an old pickled cheese. My family really likes pickled cheese, so they would buy it in these giant containers. Um, and now we get some use out of it. So the water is boily. I'm going to transfer eight cups into this. It's gonna fill like not even half the container, I think, but it's okay. I hope putting hot liquid into the glass doesn't make it break. That is the amount of kombucha that we're making, which is slightly disappointing, but it's okay. I don't wanna overwhelm my scoby on the first go. Then I'm going to throw in my tea bags. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. I saw a post that said to do one tea bag per two cups or one teaspoon of tea per two cups. So eight cups of water requires four tea bags. 
I'm gonna let this steep until it's all cool and then we'll come back to it. You don't wanna put a SCOBY in too hot tea, otherwise it will die because the bacteria dies in heat. So yeah, now we're just waiting. It took like over an hour, but the tea is finally cool. Here is my little SCOBY baby. Let's get the tea bags out of here. I forgot to record it, but while the tea was still warm, I added half a cup of sugar. Didn't want to add the sugar after it cooled, obviously, because then it would take forever to dissolve. So let's remove our tea bags. If you use loose leaf tea, you would obviously strain it out. Cannot use camera and find tea bags at the same time. Multitasking ain't my strong suit. Alrighty, at this point we just basically made um, fresh iced tea. Uh, now we are about to kombucha ice it. There is our beautiful little scoby. Let's name him Frankie. Frankie the scoby. Frankie's going inside now. That's the little scoby hotel liquid and ooh, yeah. Hi, have fun in there. There he is, just floating. Hopefully starting to do his own thing real soon. We have um, the jar covered in a piece of, this is just an old t-shirt and rubber band. You need it to be able to breathe so you don't want to seal it. Um, and I'm going to put this in a cabinet or somewhere dark and not cold for the bacteria to do its thing. I'm actually going to Baltimore for about 10 days. So this is going to remain untouched for 10 days. I won't know what's going on until I come back. Hopefully it turns out good. This is a pretty big container of kombucha. Not quite sure if it's gonna need longer than 10 days, but we'll taste it when I come back and we'll see what's going on. Wish Frankie luck, really. Several days later. Hey guys, you can't see this situation right now, but I'm gonna bring the camera down in a little bit so you can. <sighs> My little scoby baby has been hard at work for the past 10 days. Um, and you see that whole layer on top? That's a whole new SCOBY. And then you see like that kind of SCOBY in the inside? That's the old SCOBY. So this whole SCOBY grew while it was making this little batch of kombucha. We just came back from Baltimore a few days ago and I came home to this little surprise. So I'm super excited. What we're going to do today is we're going to bottle the um, kombucha that we have. I'm going to take the SCOBY itself and two cups of starter and put it in this Tupperware um, and I'm gonna make a new batch of kombucha like later today and then I don't think we're gonna have a lot of actual kombucha left over so I have these two bottles um, hopefully we'll get two full bottles of kombucha that we can do the second fermentation in and then we can do a taste test in a few days in these bottles these bottles are from health aid I just figured that they would be really good to repurpose for my own homemade kombucha now that I can take an appropriate amount of starter and I have a bigger scoby I can make make like the whole jar of tea for next time. Cross our fingers. All right, so I'm gonna go get a like stand and bring you guys down so you can see what's going on on this table. I'm wearing my, my brother's sweatpants are so big, it's great. Okay, it's like the benefit of having a younger brother that's like 100 pounds heavier than you. Not 100, um, but we're thick in my family. Anyway, here is the SCOBY. Let's just get this, um, Next step going, I have some tongs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the new scoby and the old scoby. Oh, it smells vinegary, it smells like kombucha. And put it in this Tupperware. Okay, that is the old, that is the new scoby. It's so thin and perfect and round and cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna take out the old SCOBY, I guess. Do I need both SCOBYs for this new batch? I don't know. I'll use both SCOBYs, why not? All right, so I have both SCOBYs here. Um, and then I'm going to just put some of this liquid in here. I'm gonna guesstimate about two cups of liquid because that's how much I need um, for my next batch. And I'm going to close this Tupperware up and use it for my next batch of kombucha. So that is that. Just gonna put that aside. And this is how much kombucha we have left over. So now we, we filled these guys with kombucha. These have been like properly cleaned and stuff. Um, and I have a funnel right here. And I have a piece of like cheesecloth that I'm gonna just 
line the funnel with because we don't want scoby bits in our kombucha. This is exciting. The next thing I need to make, learn to make is pickles and sauerkraut and kimchi. Okay, we have three bottles of fresh homemade kombucha ready for their second fermentation. I'm tempted to take a sip. I think I'm gonna take a sip. We'll see how it is. Tastes like kombucha. Now we just have to wait for it to get cold and fizzy. Well, first fizzy, then cold. I'm gonna throw a cap on these and then um, give them two or three days to carbonate. So now that they're gonna ferment with a cap on, all the bubbles that are made during like the fermentation process get trapped inside the kombucha and make it fizzy. So these are gonna go back in my cupboard for maybe two days and then go into the fridge before our final taste test on Saturday. For reference, today is Wednesday. So in a couple days, these will be ready for our taste test and I could wrap up this video and enjoy my first official batch of homemade kombucha. Thousands of tears later. Hey guys. <coughs> so here I am, super sick. And I'm like, you know, it'd be great if I didn't have to film today. I just edited my kombucha video and I had it up in a couple days, you know? Come to find out that I completely deleted the last clip of this video. The clip that included the taste test, you know, the outro, the conclusion. Like a pretty important clip, you know? And I was pretty darn disappointed. I've had like accidentally deleted footage before in the past, but you know, when you feel sick, it just feels like a bigger deal. So I was like, there is no way I'm scrapping this video. I collabed with someone. I shot it over like two weeks. I worked really hard on this video, so it's still going up. I'll just give you a little recap of what that clip was like. So I tried those kombuchas and they were pretty good. They were kind of mild because I didn't flavor them and they weren't very fizzy. I did a bunch of research afterwards as to why maybe they weren't very fizzy. And apparently if you add fruit juice, like if you add a flavoring after you make the kombucha, then the fizziness is a little bit better because the kombucha scoby little particles has like more sugar to work with to make more fizz. So next time for the second fermentation, I'm definitely gonna add a flavoring because I like the fizziness in store-bought kombucha. But I also have to keep in mind that I can never get as fizzy as regular kombucha, like store-bought kombucha, because store-bought kombucha cheats and they like carbonate their kombuchas like the same way you would a soda. So I guess homemade kombucha can never be as fizzy as regular kombucha, but I think I can do a little bit more fizz than my first batch. I currently have a second batch brewing that I'm gonna flavor. Not quite sure what, maybe like apple ginger or something. Uh, I don't have a juicer, so I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do that. We'll see. So yeah, I'm sorry about this. I'm severely disappointed in myself and in the ending of this video because I was super excited and publishing it. And I do look forward to creating kombuchas with different flavor profiles in the future and maybe doing future kombucha videos when I get more experience. <sighs> but for now, I'm going to lay in bed all day and edit and hopefully feel better by tomorrow. That is all I have for today. Like if you like, subscribe if you want to subscribe. If you want to follow me on Instagram where I post every single day, I'll put my Instagram right here. And that's all I have for today. I will talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. As always, I have to shout out my bodega babes, Jessica, Christina, Marlene, Lucia, Alex Creates, Laura, Ellen, Michelle, Kaylin, Marielle, Alex of Planet Earth, Emily, Juanita, Charlotte, Emily B, Jenny, Marcia, Gemini, and Curtis. You guys are the absolute best, and these videos are made possible with your support.